Well, it's kind of hard to believe it's been a year since we made over our bedroom and started using this room, it used to be a family room, as our master bedroom, and I love it. Uh, we've had different bedrooms over the years. This isn't even the biggest one, but it is by far my favorite. So today, there's a few things I wanna do to like reset it, I might have got a new comforter. I told Tom that I would not paint the footboard, our black metal footboard, but there might be something we can try that's not paint, but that might still give it the goldish bronzish look that I'm going for now. So I see myself, my, my role in your life is to be the friend that tries out these things that they see on Instagram to see if it actually works before you have to try it. And then I can give you an honest review and we'll just see if it works or not. So like I said, we've been in this bedroom for a year, but the comforter set, we've actually had this for a little over two years now. And I showed you a little while back, um, I had taken it to the laundromat, tried to get it clean, and it didn't come super clean, but I did see comments about trying laundry stripping. And so I actually wanna try that on the comforter and also our sheet. We don't normally show our sheets because <laughs> they get really dirty. So I thought we should get that stuff soaking right away because it takes, you know, like six hours it's supposed to soak before you then go on to launder it. And then we can talk a little bit more um, about <laughs> my other crazy ideas <laughs> for this room. So I had shared this a little while back. I took this to a laundromat to be laundered and it came back through with some rust stains. I tried using hydrogen peroxide and I thought they came out better than they did. So we're just gonna try out the laundry stripping on this and on our bed sheet and see if it makes a difference. At this point, I don't have anything to lose. I am putting on, I'm planning on putting on a new comforter regardless. So basically, there's a bunch of different recipes out there for laundry stripping. So I just found the one that was supposed to be the best. Um, I'm very trusting of people on the internet. So it was just two parts borax uh, to one part uh, powdered Tide, they are very specific about that, and one part baking soda. It's supposed to be the washing soda, I just have baking soda. I did um, our boys' comforters a little while back, and because Gage is really sensitive to like household cleaners, I used our Molly's Suds instead of the Tide, powdered Molly Suds versus powdered Tide, and it did not work as well. So I do think the Tide or a Tide like detergent like that actually does make a big difference. But then you just um, let it soak and then every half hour you take your broom handle and you swish it around. And um, then after six hours, you drain the water, kind of squeeze it out best you can. It's super heavy then. And then go throw it in the washing machine. And what I read is you don't actually have to add anything to the washing machine because there's so much detergent and stuff in here. So we're gonna let this soak and we're gonna go try out the rub and buff on the bed frame. All right, so talking about trusting people on the internet, this is a product that I have seen Allie from Proverbs 31 Girl use a hundred times. It's called Rub and Buff, and it is a wax, and it has a metallic finish. And so she has been converting all of her like black farmhouse fixtures to something that's a little more bronzy, goldish colored. I've seen her do it all the time and it works well, it stays on. Like she's done it on faucets and it stays on very well. The only thing I'm worried about is that this tube that I ordered on Amazon is much smaller than what I've seen her use and I want to do our whole footboard with this. So I don't know if this is gonna go far enough. I have used it one time. I did the picture frame in our camper. It was a black plastic picture frame and I just put this on and it worked really well. So we're just gonna, I don't know, see how it goes. Okay, so you just need something kind of non-porous. You just put some on and you rub it around. Like, it's actually very simple to use. It doesn't smell super great, I will um, tell you that. But I was actually kind of impressed um, when I was doing the picture frame by how much area I was able to cover with it. So it looks really shiny on the video. It's not that shiny in person it it does look this color it comes in different shades is called european gold and um it looks more antiquey so i'm not sure how it's looking on there if you're just like oh my goodness what are you doing <laughs> and then i might need to get a paintbrush to get into some of these little grooves um i had to do that with the picture frame and that worked really well now if we haven't been friends for a super long time um you might not know about me, like I love 
all of the household DIY stuff. And if I were to ever like create a different YouTube channel that had nothing to do um, with minimalism, well, first I might make it about beginner gardening because I've actually really been enjoying that this spring. But then behind that, I would totally do DIY stuff like inexpensive updates that you can do to your home, all of that kind of stuff, because I just think it's so fun to like be creative in that way and to try just different things like this. I have a pretty high threshold for failure. So if something doesn't work out, I'm just like, well, we tried, right? And so you've seen that, like if you've seen us, like when I uh, tried to chalk paint our couch in our camper, and I, like that did not work out <laughs> at all. And so we ended up just putting a cover on it and it was, you know, it is what it is. And so I'm always willing to give something a try. I'm actually really pleased with how it's going and I have hardly put a dent in this tube. So I think we're gonna be okay being able to do like this whole footboard without running out. So I'm actually really glad about that. Okay, I am blown away by how far this little tube is going. I was really worried. Goes on super easy. Like this is a very easy thing anyone can do. The only thing I was noticing was that on some of the like the bigger tubing, like where it's a big long area, it was a little bit harder to keep it even. Like on the spindles, it was it was much easier because it definitely just looks like an antique finish. So it took a little practice to get the bigger areas right. But again, the reason I was wanting to even do this was that we replaced our headboard with this um, wood one, which I'll I'll talk about in a little bit if Tom thinks it's helping or not. But we had done that, and but we left the metal, but basically the rest of the frame stayed the same. So we left the metal footboard and I just didn't feel like it really went together. So that's why I had just thought if we could give it, you know, a warmer tone, it would just really blend much better. And you know, in the past I would have just spray painted it, but again, then you have to like take it apart and all of that. So this was so much easier and it's already drying really fast because then the thing I thought of was, oh crud, when I put the new comforter and hang it over the end like we normally do, is it going to rub off on the comforter then? <laughs> but it's drying very quickly and so I think it's gonna be totally fine, but I'm gonna let it set up um, longer. We still have our, our sheets and everything soaking, um, so it'll be a little bit yet. So we'll just wait and see how quickly it dries. Okay, let's go give the sheets and comforter a quick stir and then I did get a new mattress protector that I wanna put on as well. I just came to give this a quick stir and I wanted to show you how dirty the water is. It's a little discouraging because like I said, I just washed the comforter um, like a month ago and the sheets not that long ago either. So it is pretty wild how much uh, grime, I don't know, crud is coming out of these. So I think it's working. So every time we show our mattress, including the one we just put in our camper, we always see the comments that are like, you should have a mattress protector. And I'm like, right, I keep meaning to get another one. We had had one and someone might have put it through the dryer and it like disintegrated. So um, I ordered two, one for in here, one in the camper. So let's put this on quick before we put the sheets and comforter back on. You probably knew we couldn't miss this opportunity to talk about our Helix mattress as well. Uh, it seems like more recently we've had people, if we see them at like church or somewhere else, they come up and they're like, but do you really like your Helix mattress? Like, should we order one? And we are like, yes, hands down. Like when we come on our videos and we say, we love our Helix mattress, we really love our Helix mattress. Tom and I committed early on that we would only endorse products that we wholeheartedly believe in and that as you, our friend, that we would recommend to you as well. And if at any point we had thought like, no, we don't love it so much anymore, um, that would be it. We would never ever promote a product <laughs> that we didn't believe in. And so we love it. We sleep so well on it. We miss it when we're traveling. And it was so easy to get the right fit for us. So again, you just go online, you take their sleep quiz, you put in like your height and weight, and then what are your, what, what sleep position are you normally in? What firmness do you prefer? And then if you sleep with someone else, you have them fill it out as well. And then they match you with what they really think will be your best mattress. And it comes rolled up in a box, delivered to your door. Shipping is included in the US. And it's just super easy to set up and you unroll it, you watch it take shape, and then you sleep on it. And you get to try it out for 100 nights. And I think that's what we really appreciate about it is because 
Sure, something can work great for us, but how can we know, right? If we're not going to a store, we're not laying on it, we're not trying it out. And so you get 100 nights to test it out and to see if it's right for you. And if it's not, they will take care of you. It does have a 10 year warranty. We're, we're about a year and a half. Oh my goodness, we're coming up on two years in August that we've had ours. And we feel like it has kept its shape really well. Again, we talked last time, like we don't roll down, both roll down to the middle. Um, we just are really pleased with how it's wearing as well. And so we love it. We tell like if anyone, if, if we see you out and about and you come up to us and you're like, should we get a Helix mattress? We will 1000% say yes. We really believe that you will have a great experience with your Helix mattress as well. So if you use our link down below, you can save up to $200 and get two free pillows as well. It does look so nice now having this mattress protector back on it again. And I just realized that my finger is totally still covered um, in the rub, rub and buff. Okay, so we have a little like, stuff accumulation over here. Um, some of it's fun stuff that we're gonna put on next, like the bedding and stuff. Um, and then we have just the garbage um, from the mattress protector. And this is the one that needs to go out to the camper. So this stuff is pretty easy to deal with. Then we have, the headboard and so it's not a complete bed frame and so Tom's like uh, what do you want to do with that and I had this idea that if you cut off the top rail part that it actually makes like a cute little trellis and it would kind of be cute in front of our little barn and so what I think I'm gonna do is um, I think I'm gonna bring it down to my parents shop and see if my dad or my brother would chop off the top for me and then I think I'm gonna put it out in front of the little barn. And so I think I'm gonna put it out there and then um, see if I can get something to grow up it. And I think that would be super cute. Otherwise Tom said we can just throw it on the scrap pile, <laughs> like scrap metal. And I'm like, well, that seems kind of sad. So I'm gonna go take this stuff and get it put away. I love Dana's method from a slob come clean where she just like, take it there now, right? Normally I would pile it upside the door, outside the door and then have to deal with it when I walk out of the room, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna go take this stuff there and then we'll come back and deal with some of the other stuff too. So this is the new comforter and sham. So I'm just gonna put this on the end of the bed for now. The other thing that happens is because the basement door is right there, um, stuff that is supposed to go down to the basement, like this is extra coffee that just needs to go down to our pantry shelves down there. Isn't it amazing how it just ends up stopping right here? Isn't that, it's just remarkable, isn't it? So um, I'm gonna go run this stuff down there. I'm gonna look around and see if there's anything else to go down in the basement. I don't think so. I'll be right back. There's a couple more things over here and then we'll talk about the clapper. I just saw the box for that. Um, doesn't everyone have an air compressor and air nailer in the corner of their bedroom? Tom's actually been um, working on putting out more of the trim, which I am so grateful for and it looks really good. But these, um, this one we're gonna use these are the door toppers that we just buy that are already made. And he wasn't, he couldn't remember what size he needed, so he just got both. Uh, he put up the others, but these are all extras. So these need to get returned. So I'm gonna go put these in my car and I am just gonna take care of the return. Um, I think that'll be more successful. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna go take these there and then I'm gonna see if we can put the air compressor somewhere else. Okay, Tom said we can put the air compressor in the extra bedroom. So at least it's not in here. I wanna have I wanna have this room like completely put together um, when we're done today. Okay, so um, a little while back we showed, we got this wood headboard. I was trying to see if it would help prevent Tom's headaches and my headaches too that I've been getting. I think it's helping. We've also been unplugging the light because um, we had read too that having like anything plugged in above your head isn't good. And so I do feel like it's making a difference. I feel like Tom hasn't been getting as many headaches, but I don't know if he would come on video and say that yet. So I won't speak for him. I will just speak for myself that I do think it's making a difference. Um, but I don't know. We did though, we also showed on that video though, that we got a clapper for the light that's above um, the bed because now the switch was covered up. This is horrible. It would like, A, we showed, you have to clap really loud to get it to work. It would come on in the middle of the night. Like it was like three o'clock in the morning one night and all of a sudden the light comes on and I'm like, oh my goodness. And like, I'm like, Tom, turn it off. And like, cause he can clap the right way. Like I can't clap the right way. Um, and so then he couldn't get it. And then he was like just unplugging it. So I want to send this back 
it's like all all of this stuff has been like next to our bed right because of it and so i am going to package this up right now and send it back and then we got this other one um that like mounts to the wall but again we didn't know that that would be the best solution either because you can't reach it from bed so i think i'm going to send this one back too and there was one thank you that one of you had sent that has a little remote so i think we're going to send all this back and get that one but what a pain like it's just a pain having to like do all this stuff right but and this is the stuff that just clutters up our spaces and is just so annoying <laughs> so i am excited to get this out of here but it does take a little bit of time too so i'm gonna go get this packaged up oh there was these like extra camera bags that were under i don't know why they're under there we keep all of our tech stuff um under the cabinets um, by the computers out there under that counter and so one of these we don't need we don't need two of them a lot of times when you buy a camera they'll come with this you know so i'm gonna let one of them go the bigger one it's too bulky and then put the other one with that. So this will get donated. This will get sent back. At least we're getting some of this clutter cleared out of here. All right, so it's quite a few hours later. So the stuff that I had soaking in the tub, I have moved to the washing machine. I just washed it on a hot water cycle. I did two rinses and now it is in the dryer. So as soon as the sheets come out, we will make the bed and see how this new comforter looks. This whole idea of creating a minimalist bedroom, like I said, it was a year ago that we moved into this family room as our bedroom. And I love it so much. It is probably my favorite room in the house. Um, we put these chairs in here and we, Tom and I probably sit in them twice a day. Uh, we start our day here in the morning with coffee and then we end our day here too. And I love that they swivel and I can turn and look out the window. They have been such a great addition to this room. I really like it. Um, we had a different, sometimes people ask like, what happened to the round teal side table we had? Corbin broke it, <laughs> which is fine. It was a, not the sturdiest of tables. So we just got this other table now, which is fine. I don't love it, but it's fine. But what I'm realizing when it comes to like creating a space and designing it and having it really be how we want it to be is that I'm realizing how sensitive I am to extra stuff. And so I really appreciate that this room is a place where normally we really work to keep it simplified to not let extra stuff creep in like what had happened it still happens right and then i just deal with it um but really trying to keep this space really minimal really peaceful and a place where we can kind of just like shut the door go away from all the other stuff and be able to take time um, to relax and unwind as far as the effectiveness of the stripping of <laughs> soaking it and doing all that i do think they're a lot cleaner it's definitely not perfect um they're they're a much more even grunginess to it now so i do think it worked well and obviously seeing all the dirt in the bathtub um i think was evidence to that as well so i do think it works um they did say you can't do it too often because it is kind of hard on your linens as well um but seasonally it's okay to do it so I do think it's effective and I do think if we do it from the get-go, like these sheets are two years old, if we do it more frequently, if we were to get new sheets, um, then obviously it would be a lot more effective as well. All right, so getting the bed made, I love how this comforter looks. Um, I kind of wanted to go for a little bit more of a country style and I wanted it to have some color in it so that it doesn't show the dirt quite so much. I love being married to a handyman. It's super great and has lots of benefits, but having white linens just doesn't seem like super duper practical and it's totally fine. I really like how this looks. Um, I know sometimes people are like, is it minimalist to be like changing bedding that doesn't need to be changed or changing furniture or whatever? And I don't. I don't actually really care. Um, like I said earlier, like I really love like home decor stuff and even that I don't do a ton of. And so um, I would rather buy like home decor, linens, decorations, that kind of stuff than like clothes or other things. And so it's just something I enjoy. And so, yep, I don't know if it's if this would constitute minimalist or not, but it is what it is. And I really like how it looks now. So we got that all put back together. Um, I really like how the bed frame turned out. I think I might go back and put another light coat on. You can still see um, some of the black showing through, which is fine. I mean, it definitely gives it an antique look, but I think if I do another light coat, it'll brighten it up just a little bit more and then I think it'll look even better. 
but for a half hour and a third of a tube of <laughs> the Robin Buff, um, I think that it looks really awesome and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And no, I'm not gonna get Tom's opinion on it right now. <laughs> so we'll, we'll save that for another day, it's totally fine. I don't think it looks pink. I'm I'm really hoping that it I'm trying to tell if you're gonna think it looks pink or not. It's it's very mauve. That like for all of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, like I remember our bathroom was painted mauve, and then we had that um home interior sign with the hearts and the love is kind, love is all that. Um it's kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But overall, I really like how it looks and uh, good news, I don't have to worry at all about the gold stuff rubbing off on the comforter. It is completely like dried, hardened set. Um, so it's not even a concern at all that it's gonna rub off. And so that's super cool because that was like the easiest way ever <laughs> to update the footboard. And I love how it looks now with all of this. So hopefully I didn't make our bedroom too girly, but um, I think it's, Tom doesn't actually care that much. <laughs> and I do think this comforter is gonna be much more forgiving um, to dirt and that kind of stuff. All right, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and keeping me company as I worked in here. And I would love to know, is there anything you would love to do in your bedroom? Is there any thoughts you've had to further simplify it or other things you'd like to do to update it or just kind of make it your own oasis? It's always fun to hear your ideas around that as well. So share those down below. But otherwise, I hope that you have a great weekend. I love you and I'll see you again soon.